Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Colleen, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples. The web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, none of us live for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be both Lord and that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why then do you judge your brother? Or you, why do you look down on your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. 
So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. The word of the Lord. May the Lord be on your lips and your heart, my parents, also worthy of all, native of our Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. And blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. And blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. And blessed are they who are persecuted for for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are they who insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Schultz family, on behalf of myself, Father Zach, Deacon Robinson, and all of us here at St. Mary's, we want to express our condolences for the loss of Colleen. St. Paul says that when one member of the body is honored, the whole body is honored. And one member suffers, the whole body suffers. So we're praying for you during this time. When Don and Colleen were married in Blackwell 67 years ago, they had, they, they had their marriage blessed. And one of the things that the priest said during the blessing was, may you live to see your children's children. And then after a happy old age, may you go to the kingdom of paradise where you will live forever. Today, that is fulfilled. And when we see promises like that, and when we see uh, uh, wishes like that, or blessings from the church, we see ultimately that God is good, and that God is is, uh, faithful, and God keeps his promises. So when we come to a funeral, we come to pray for the dead, we come to to pray for the eternal life, and we come to be reminded ourselves of eternal life. And so all around us, pretty much in every Catholic church you go to, you're going to see different signs of hope. And so you see the stained glass windows that are around us, of the saints that remind us that if they can do it, then we can do it. You see the stations of the cross around us that remind us of the love that God has for us and the prices of sin. We have the titles, some titles of the Blessed Virgin Mary around us that remind us that she's our mother. But then you come to very funeral-specific things. And so you see, of course, the, the coffin and the pall that we put over it. Now, the pall is supposed to remind us of the baptismal garment that we had when we were baptized. And the blessing that I gave the coffin beforehand is supposed to remind us of the bars of our own baptism. This large candle right here is called the Easter Vigil candle. And the deacon on the night of the Easter Vigil brings that candle into a completely dark church raises it up and says, Christ our light, and we respond, thanks be to God. That light is supposed to remind us that Jesus Christ is the light of our life. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. 
That candle is also lit at our baptism. That's supposed to represent the flame of faith that is now alive in our souls. And then that same candle is lit at our funerals, which reminds us that Christ is our light, that we are to follow to eternal life. Now, of course, in every Catholic church, you have this rather large gold box back there. That's called the tabernacle. It comes from the Hebrew word to dwell among us. And we believe that dwelling there is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you've been to a funeral that I've done before, uh, we, uh, you, you, know, you know these things. And the reason I always bring them up is because they are signs of joy and they are signs of hope. Colleen was baptized. She had that, that large of baptism that, that ran over her, that marked her as a Christian, that marked her as a, uh, as a beloved daughter of God. She was clothed in that white garment, which represented the state of her soul. You know, she had this candle lit at her baptism, which represents, of course, that, that flame of faith that was alive in her soul. And she received the Eucharist, by blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ regularly. One of the things that the family mentioned when I met with them is Colleen was a faithful, practicing Catholic. And, and since I've been here, you know, Colleen was always right in the front pew here and, uh, and, and was there until her body would no longer allow her to come. And when we see someone who has been a, a faithful, practicing Catholic for so long, we see certain things that kind of happen around them. One is joy. You know, Colleen was always uh, joyful, and I'm sure her kids are like, well, not always, you know. But Colleen was joyful. She had that lived reality of a, of a relationship with Jesus Christ, and that was nurtured by the sacraments. You know, uh, the kids were telling me that uh, uh, not only would she, you know, pray the rosary, but also if the TV was on, it was probably on EWTN. And when we see a faithful Catholic, we see someone who knows that Jesus loves them and then express that in different ways. You know, one is an active parish life, but also an active way of bringing their family up in the faith. And so children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, you knew your mom was Catholic. You know, you knew your grandma was Catholic. You knew your great-grandmother was Catholic. And when we see this, we see it's because they're living their faith. So when we come to a funeral, we're, of course, sad. You know, we're sad that Colleen's not going to be around anymore. Uh, however, she is going to be praying for us. Because when Father Zach went and anointed her, he gave her what's called the apostolic pardon. The apostolic pardon is a get-out-of-purgatory-free card. And so when you get the apostolic pardon at the moment of your death, then when you die, after you've been absolved and anointed, we teach uh, that we go straight to heaven. So I'm not here to canonize Colleen quite yet, you know, but if she didn't make it, then uh, the last one out hit the lights. You know? uh, Colleen is someone who is a faithful Christian, someone who lived her faith, practiced her faith, and everyone knew it. And when we see the gospel today, it's uh, from the gospel of St. Matthew, and it's the Beatitudes. Uh, Beatitudes comes from the Latin word beatus, uh, which means blessed, and that's why it starts out with blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn. This is really kind of a recipe of what we'll go through in life. You know, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the clean of heart, the peacemakers. It kind of goes through how we'll all be at some point. But blessed are those who mourn, they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. And when we come and we, we see these Beatitudes, we are reminded of Colleen, who, who lived them out, but we're reminded also of ourselves. The funerals are meant to remind us of the eternal life that we were promised in the waters of baptism when we ourselves were baptized. Now in the first readings from the prophet Isaiah, and he says, on this mountain. Now anytime a mountain is mentioned in scripture, there's supposed to be an encounter with Christ. And so, or a counter with God. It's what's called a theophany. It's when God manifests. And so he says, On this mountain the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples. The web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. So we teach that right now we see things as through a veil. You know, we can see things, but not as clearly as we ought to. So we teach that when we die, uh, when our soul is in a state of grace, we penetrate that veil, and we can see things clearly for what they are. 
And so when, you know, we always say when we get to heaven, we're going to ask God why this happened or why this happened, right? When we penetrate past the veil, we'll know why those things happen. If we really believe in Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 and following, where, Saint, where, where Jesus gives St. Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven, whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven, whatever we loose on earth will be loose in heaven, ultimately we believe that since Colleen received the apostolic pardon right before her death, she is now in heaven praying for us. And she leaves a legacy. She leaves big shoes to fill. She leaves someone who, who was a big part of our community, especially here at St. Mary's Catholic School. Uh, the servers were talking in the sacristy beforehand that they remember being taken care of uh, by, by Colleen. Uh, actually, the second graders just walked in right when the gospel was being read, and I, I mentioned to Miss Kinky, who uh, knew Colleen very well, to shut the door, you know, because uh, the second graders aren't very quiet. Uh, you know, we see someone who loved children, and we see someone who formed them up to be little disciples. And so Colleen has left a, 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 a footprint wherever she went. And she left a footprint wherever she went because of that lived relationship with Christ. And so we, for our part, are called to imitate her. We, for our part, are called to ask her to pray for us, sure, but also to imitate her faithful example. And so by going to Mass every Sunday, by having an intimate relationship with Christ, by being forgiven uh, of our sins and the sacrament of confession, by practicing acts of charity and mercy, and being kind and merciful to those we meet. When we see that, when we see someone who lived that out, we, cannot, we can only hope to be that way, and we can only hope to follow that example. Uh, there's this wonderful picture right in front of me of the, the Schultz family filling up the sanctuary uh, here at, uh, at St. Mary's. And that is just a visible sign of the blessings that she and Don received together. And so Schultz family, as you go forth, you know, uh, continue to carry out your parents, grandparents, great-grandparents' legacy by being faithful to our Lord and being faithful to each other. You know, letting your, your family gatherings be marked with prayer. Let your family gatherings be marked with peace. And let your family gatherings, more importantly, be marked with joy. Because ultimately, when we you know, come to a funeral and we say goodbye to the patriarch or the matriarch of the family, uh, that's when the mantle is passed to you all to be kept up, to be kept uh, going, and to remember where you came from. And so throughout the rest of this uh, Mass, let's remember to storm prayer uh, with, uh, for Colleen uh, that she will pass over the waters of death into the kingdom of heaven. And let's be assured right now that she is at the pearly gates and, and Jesus Christ is meeting her there, saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into your, your eternal reward. Praise be Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. In baptism, Colleen received the light of Christ, scattered the darkness now, and lead her over the water to death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. My sister Colleen was nourished at the table with the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us to await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence and war and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all those whose faith is known to you alone, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Colleen seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that comes from grief, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Colleen. Strengthen our hope so that we may be <coughs> in the expectation of your son's coming, we pray to the Lord. Lord, And we pray for a good, slow, soaking, non-destructive rain. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, 
Hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the offertory. Thank you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For the praise of the Lord, for our good and good law. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Colleen, we beseech your mercy, that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those sad by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as of thou end we acclaim. Holy, holy,
Please kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Saintly Rother, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May a sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope and Paul our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Colleen, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We, of course, welcome everyone here to the celebration of Colleen's life. Not all of our churches share the same creed, so I would ask for only practicing Catholics to present themselves for communion. If you are Catholic and you're not practicing, or if you're not Catholic at all, I'd invite you to stay in your pew and continue to pray for the repose of Colleen's soul. Let perpetual light shine upon her. With your saints forever, for you are merciful. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon her with your saints forever, for you are merciful. The body of Christ. Amen. The 
butter Christ. Mm -hmm. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, 
mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Colleen may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. For those of you who are wondering what just happened up here, this is what's called Mass. It's from the Latin word Misa, which means offering. It's where we offer bread and wine to Almighty God, and He in turn gives us the body, blood, soul, and divinity of His Son. We're now going to bring on incense. Incense represents our prayers rising to heaven. There's also, you know, a kind of a, a legend that uh, uh, when a farmer or a farmer's wife dies uh, and we're in a drought, then we'll immediately get rain. And so, uh, so let's start praying for that as well. Let's ask Colleen to send some rain our way, hopefully around 7 p.m. tonight, according to the weather. So, <laughs> so in, in since it's a symbol of our prayers rising in heaven, so let's storm uh, prayer, uh, heaven, asking for uh, Colleen to be accepted into the eternal kingdom of God. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Please join me for a moment of silent prayer. your hands, Father, our mercies, we commend our sister Colleen in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon her in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us take our sister Colleen to her place of rest. 